At 13 minutes, this is a long movie, but you want to watch all of it. I've been waiting a lifetime to make a movie like this, because you know what? The fish rots at the head. You guys Mr. Right. Mr. King? Second floor. Yeah. Yes. Mr. King, nice to meet you, sir. Brad Jardis. Brad, hey, hey, hey how nice are to you? Nice to meet you, man. I love your website. I follow your work. <laughs> Thank you. <Great. laughs> pleasure pleasure to finally put a face to a name. Indeed, this is going to be a rocking movie today. <laughs> this one I just, yeah, for, oh, it's going to be real good. Absolutely. I'm a fan of your work um, against Thank Senator Ayotte. Oh, yeah, she's horrible. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, she is. She actually encouraged my uh, police chief to fire me uh, mm -hmm. back when I was a police officer. Right. Yeah, yeah. Wait, say that one again. Getting to understand more and more what happened. The Attorney General has an apparent conflict of interest in some of these cases. Whenever citizens claim injury, it's the duty of that office to protect them. However, that same office has a duty to protect the agencies. So, who do they work for? Uh, as a former Marine Corps officer, who swore to uphold the Constitution of the United States. I never thought I'd be in the position to have to do that and fight for it against my own Attorney General and my own state agencies. Redress of grievances in New Hampshire has already proved to be a lightning rod, a bellwether. It's already exposed systemic and institutional problems and will serve into the future to tell us, your representatives, how to make our government the best it can be for you. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to open the uh, floor. Uh, I'm a uh, five-year, a five-term representative, uh, and um, so this is my statement. It seems important to me to respond to the sensational and I believe irresponsible rhetoric emanating from the office of the Attorney General regarding the General Court's Redress of Grievance Committee and our activities to produce redress. <clears throat> a surprising number of false claims have been made regarding this legislature and the work of our committee. The Attorney General remarkably seems to actually have a problem with the one provision in our state constitution designed to protect our citizens from government abuse. His comments suggest the actions of an office acting as counsel for state agencies and certainly not as representatives of the people. The most people-friendly, people-protective of all the state constitutions. It says that, quote, all power residing originally in and being derived from the people, all the magistrates and officers of government are their substitutes and agents, and at all times accountable to them. Government, therefore, should be open, accessible, and here we have it, accountable and responsive. And I really like to thank everyone who has been on the committee, both in terms of hearing testimony and in presenting testimony, to make sure that um, the government is being responsible to the people of the state of New Hampshire. And I hope we're setting an example for the rest of the nation in terms of accountability. Thank you. And removed my child from me in an unnoticed hearing. Now, the problem here is that my due process has been denied by the Hooks at Family Division on, at last count, 100 specific instances. I have been unable to get any justice in the New Hampshire Family Division whatsoever. To me, it's very troubling to me as a father, but as a citizen, it's even more troubling because I'm sure that I'm speaking on behalf of hundreds, if not thousands, of similarly aggrieved individuals. You are correct, sir. I know many of them. That have endured unbelievable oppression by a system that is endemically and systemically flawed. I've I don't spent, to a word, not one word. I have spent and or sacrifice nearly a half of a million dollars attempting to obtain justice between lost wages, attorney's fees, other costs such as accountants and um, experts that the courts are, court has required. 
The court has refused to allow me to even see my child without the intervention of a therapist. Yet, no allegations were founded against me whatsoever. I've never been determined to be unfit. And so what we see happening is fit parents, in my case anyways, I'm a fit parent, never adjudicated unfit, that has had my child stripped from me with no reason but an allegation. In my research, Legal I have kidnapping. found that the only the final stop for any justice whatsoever is the Legislative Committee for Redress of Grievance. It's the last stop for liberty. And that's why I put my petition in through my local representative, who has been a delight to work with and has been tremendously helpful to me. I've spoken before the committee on a number of occasions. I've brought my story. Uh, the people named in my petition were invited to speak. They didn't show up. Uh, given that some of us have been threatened by uh, lawyers, um, as in my case, uh, there's a very large connection with lawyers involved in my case. I've been threatened to lose custody of my child, who I've never had less than half custody, and I've had full custody for two years. So in the process where my uh, daughter's mother abused her, I, was, I ran down to the family court. During that time, lawyers were involved because she worked at the country club and for, for other lawyers. And um, I've been systematic, systematically uh, removed of uh, most of my assets. And I'd like to know if there's restitution in the source fund to support all of us who've been taken advantage of. Because that's what needs to happen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Joseph. And, uh, next, I have up a, um, a person who's recently been involved with the Attorney General's office himself and won in court uh, three times, finally at the Supreme Court. And I want to go ahead and allow him to tell you what this process has meant to him. His name is Jeff Frost. Afternoon. Um, yes, I'm re uh, Redress of Grievance Committee number 18 for 2011. And the first line of my prepared statement kind of says it all. Uh, absolute power and immunity cannot coexist in a free society under the rule of law. In my case, multiple constitutional violations started from day one with my action between the Attorney General's office and the Banking Department. They snowballed into a uh, war of attrition when both the Attorney General's office and the Attorney General and <clears throat> the Banking Department ignored multiple warnings of the unconstitutionality of my case. Uh, as a former Marine Corps officer who swore to uphold the Constitution of the United States, I never thought I'd be in the position to have to do that, fight for it, against my own Attorney General and my own state agencies. Uh, Kelly Ayotte, you know, who's Mike oh. Delaney's predecessor, yes. who's bought and sold by Goldman Sachs on the mortgage side. That's another issue I proved. Are you a fit chair, Mr. Haas? Yes, I am, actually. Have you ever been adjudicated unfit? Uh, no. In fact, uh, I've even taken a parenting assessment that says I'm completely fit. And a psychological evaluation. Yeah, a psychological yeah. evaluation. Yeah, it paid a thousand dollars. Very interesting. Are you familiar, and I know you've done a lot of research yeah. from what you've told uh, us in the past. Yeah. You must be familiar with a case called Troxel versus Granville. It's a U.S. Supreme Court case. Yes, that's mentioned in... in Good afternoon, this is Judicial Child Abuse, and we are here today with former Assistant Attorney General for the State of Ohio, Christopher King. How are you, Mr. King? I'm terrific. How are you today, Mr. Issa? I am doing great. Thanks for joining us. Are you familiar with a recent letter that was sent from Attorney General Michael Delaney to Speaker of the House William O'Brien regarding the Redress of Grievance Committee? I'm very familiar with it. Uh, I read it and I parsed through it a couple days ago and I read it again this morning. In fact, it is the subject of my current uh, journal post at Chris King's First Amendment page, which is, uh, again, accessible through kingcast.net uh, blog button. In any event, yeah, uh, it's also the subject of this video that I'm working on now. But a couple of things. When, well, the main thing that really irritated me about this feature, or this op-ed piece, is that he claims that the Redress Committee is not looking for justice. And that's almost a direct quote. When, in point of fact, it's people like... Delaney and many judges that are not looking for justice. And I have specific examples, I can name names and name circumstances. You know, I've got Michael Holman, whose children were taken from him, and, and when he was doing well out in Washington, the state of Washington took his children, brought them back here, 
put them with a drug-addled mother, as you guys know. The drug-addled mother, the child then was uh, in a coma for weeks because of a bicycle accident with no helmet. Since that time, he's discovered that somebody's covered up the fact that there was a drug raid at the house. I've got uh, Ralph Holder, a law enforcement officer, retired, who uh, uh, they took his children, her child at least, and put that child in a less capable new, uh, Massachusetts school out of New Hampshire because of racial considerations. And that was in the Guardian at Lightham's report. Okay, so that violates Brown versus Board of Education, uh, Palmer versus Sadati, you know, basic constitutional precepts that are, that are not working here. I got, I've got uh, Dave Colton, who went to visit uh, his children, and they drummed up a story on him that, that made him uh, into a quasi-criminal, but then they destroyed the tapes that he asked for, so he couldn't prove himself you know, not to be uh, angry or abusive, as they alleged. Uh, I've got more. I've got Mike Puia, his case, uh, where they took away the, 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 the rights to the paternal grandparents to visit because he's an activist. I've got, uh, I could go on and I can't think of, your case, of course, which is uh, insane. Um, and so these are issues that, there's something going on here. I think it involves money and you know, the Title IV stuff. And whatever it is, it's foul. And so for, you know, I find Mike Delaney's comments, as a former assistant attorney general, I find Mike Delaney's comments to be entirely without merit and uh, basically they're responsible and there's no excuse for it. So um, I'm going to continue to expose it every step of the way and every, do everything I can to keep it right here in front of the public. Well, we do appreciate your activism, your expertise, and your perseverance. Thank more, you, Mr. King. You're more than welcome. Nicely done. Yeah. Nicely done. Uh, I, we have not seen um, uh, my children in, in over two years, since March, uh, since uh, September 26, 2009. And uh, all because of a GAL who has perjured the court, has uh, falsified evidence, has not shared anything with the court whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, the, the family the, division the, the, divides yeah. families. Here in New Hampshire. That's right. In New Hampshire. Aptly named. Yeah. It's a, yeah. Aptly named, yes. <laughs> Destroying families for decades. Yes. <laughs> yes. Over two billion served. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good, good to see you. Okay, good. Good news, okay. When I see someone yeah. with a camera, they're right. taking voice. You know, these guys are talking, you're on the side, and they're okay, we're going to check this out. <laughs> uh, he, he's all right, he's going he's okay. after Morgan's yeah. truck yeah. and other things. Yeah. <laughs> we need people here. Oh, you're, uh, yeah, I've seen your name. Yeah. Chris King, nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you, Chris. You've been yes. going around to court with uh, Murray Miller. Miller and uh, all the whole nine yards. Yeah. So. Son of a gun. Well, we really, really appreciate the time you've taken. And all the, all the dedication that you've exhibited, that you've devoted your life to judicial reform and to the exposure of corruption in governments, and uh, we just thank you so much for all that you've brought to us. Um, I, I, I'm but a vessel of knowledge. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> That's terrific, dude. You're an animal. You're an animal.